années 70. Le vent de la contestation souffle. Il porte un nom, la contre-culture. On est contre la guerre au Vietnam, contre l'autorité politique, contre un modèle de société exclusivement fondé sur la consommation. Le réalisateur Richard Fleischer capte à sa façon l'esprit de l'époque en tournant son film « Soleil vert », l'un des tout premiers à traiter de l'urgence écologique produit par Hollywood, avec Charlton Heston, Edward J. Robinson et Lee Taylor Young. Tiré d'un roman de Harry Harrison, c'est un polar futuriste où Charlton Heston, alias le détective Frank Thorne, enquête sur un meurtre mystérieux. Mais Richard Fleischer avance masqué. Sous couvert d'un film de science-fiction, il aborde toute une série de thématiques audacieuses et qui résonnent aujourd'hui avec force. Les femmes, par exemple, y sont réduites au rang de simples mobiliers. L'actrice principale, Lee Taylor Young, incarne ainsi une de ces femmes qui font littéralement partie des meubles d'une résidence de luxe mise à disposition des locataires. Directors in Hollywood at that period didn't have that much control over the editing of their movies. And this movie did not have that kind of problem because obviously everybody said, oh look, it's got girls playing furniture in it, so that's good, we can sell that. Uh, so I, I think the, the idea that it was a genre picture allowed them to say, well, you know, it's a little offbeat, but it's okay because, you know, we know we can sell it. I think it was 1971, my agent called me. Uh, he was very close to Jim Aubrey, who was the head of MGM, and he, Jim Aubrey was very interested in making a science fiction movie, and he was going to have Charlton Heston play the lead, and he wanted me to play this role. So her name was Furniture, but she was very high-end furniture. Uh, there were lower rentals, but then she was higher. And I found to be in that circumstance very interesting to consider. Uh, with what they were saying in the movie was happening. The atmosphere on the set was very uh, male. I mean, I was the only female, really. They were all top professionals. And if I remember correctly, it was a little kind of scary. The first day that I met Charlton Heston, uh, I think it was the first day of shooting. Um, very respectful, uh, very gentlemanly but completely contained. We had to do a shower scene where Furniture Cheryl is in the shower with this character. And uh, it was one of these showers that show the shadow of the body, certainly not the body clearly, so you were somewhat protected, but it still had to look like you had no clothes on. And I'm standing in the shower with Charles Nesson, and some part of my brain is going, You're standing in a shower with Charlton Heston. <laughs> I thought, okay, this is different. And the the top of the shower you could see above the shower. So the camera could see the shower with the water coming out. It wasn't working. We had to stand in there for the longest time. And I very nervously, because I was a little nervous, said, looked up at him and said, um, maybe you could make the shower part. <laughs> The worst joke in the world. You know, he did not laugh. I, I, I said, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I was trying to make it easier. Dans Soleil Vert, un personnage incarne les derniers vestiges du monde qui se meurt. Il est interprété par une autre légende du cinéma, celui du monde d'avant, justement, Edward J. Robinson. Ce personnage, c'est Sol, le fidèle complice du flic Thorne. Edward J. Robinson, who plays the beautiful role in it of the librarian, the one who keeps the wisdom of former times that has long been forgotten. Books have been burned, there are no libraries. No one really reads so much anymore. Everybody's just surviving. He's the keeper of knowledge. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Eddie was like five foot two, really, a short, adorable man. 
Um, I think he was in his late 70s, maybe he was 80. And every morning he'd come on the set with his little hat and he'd say, I'm not going to work until I hug Lee. And what was amusing, and he was a rascal, you know, because it was the time of the 70s wedge shoes. So I was about six feet tall, and he came right here. So <laughs> he'd come in and he'd just bury his head in my chest and hug me, and we would laugh. So we shared joy, we shared art, and he was my ally. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the police. I'm asking you to disperse. The supply of...